Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a brief tutorial on the Synthetic Collateralized Debt Obligation or Synthetic CDO. This is a structure that has evolved over the years. I'm illustrating here an early evolution or first generation Synthetic CDO. And so we know technically what we're talking about here. It's a fully funded balance sheet Synthetic CDO. However, my focus for FRM candidates is the distinction between the cash CDO, I recorded a tutorial on that yesterday, and this synthetic CDO vehicle. I will return at the end to the idea of fully funded, but for now we want to focus on what the it means to be a synthetic CDO. As before we can start with the originator who owns a portfolio of assets and we can fairly think of the originator as a bank and the portfolio of assets as a portfolio of loans. You'll recall with the cash CDO the one of the bank's motivations was to remove these assets from its balance sheet by selling them to the special purpose vehicle. So in addition to raising cash by selling the asset, the bank transfers the credit risk to somebody else. Selling an asset is a way to get reinsured. The difference with the synthetic CDO is that the assets aren't sold. Instead, the bank purchases credit protection with the use of credit default swaps. CDS is short for credit default swaps. So let me just highlight the difference here between the cash and the synthetic CDO. Both transfer credit risk away from the bank or the originator. But the synthetic CDO does it without an asset sale and instead does it by purchasing credit protection with the credit default swaps. So that's illustrated, that credit protection is illustrated by the blue line, the CDS premium, these are just like insurance payments, the bank's going to make these either way. In exchange for the promise to receive these contingent payments, these are the claims on that insurance, if the assets default. So that's the synthetic credit protection, the transfer of credit risk without the sale of the asset. Those premiums paid by the bank go are deposited with the trustee and contribute to the high quality collateral. Now if we move over to the investors on the right side, their experience is essentially similar to their experience in the cash CDO. They are issued with the help of the underwriters securities in layers or tranches. So there's seniority and there's subordination beneath the seniority. In exchange for those securities, which is our promises of future repayment, the principal and interest, in exchange for that, they contribute their cash, the initial purchase. That's symbolized by the green line. Notice it doesn't go all the way over the left because assets weren't really sold. So assets aren't really bought. Their purchase price also con is deposited with the trustee and contributes to the high quality collateral. But these investors won't have the first claim on this collateral. The first claim is going to go to pay the defaults. So these investors, just like with the cash CDO, they've collectively purchased the credit risk, but they do it in a tranched format. So the sen senior tranche is buffered by subordinate tranches. Also, there's additional protection in the form of over collateralization and the excess spread, which I won't go into now. But in theory, the senior tranche ought to be quite protected. We've seen in the recent subprime meltdown that one of the problems was these senior tranches turned out to be quite leveraged in terms of their value and they're very sensitive to defaults that start to bubble up from the lower tranches. So we see, we saw that the models, some of the models assuming uh, with the assumption of default correlation and the sense and the sensitivity to subordination we saw that the senior tranches can plummet in value quite quickly as the subordinate tranches get impacted as before at the bottom of this totem pole is the residual or equity tranche as before typically the bank 
the originator will retain that residual tranche. You may recall there's an important reason for that. If the bank has to keep this lowest residual tranche, this riskiest piece, then it, it is incentivized to not package a portfolio of lemons because that it's on the hook for the riskiest piece. So now let's not lose sight of the big picture. The investors collectively have purchased the credit risk on the reference portfolio. They are exposed to the default risk because if there are defaults, the bank's going to get compensated here and that's going to come out of the principal and interest payments that would have gone to the investors. In terms of cash flow going in, the bank has paid these premiums on a regular basis. The investors have p purchased their securities so that we have those two sources of the high quality collateral in addition to the fact that collateral is going to earn interest on its own. We have three sources of income there. How does it get paid out? That's according to the cash flow waterfall, which I've simplified here. And the highest claim on that collateral is the default payments. And that's illustrated again here by this red arrow. So the first money that goes out is going to be to compensate the bank of the originator for defaults on the loan. Then the senior notes, then the subordination, and finally the residual. So that's the cash flow waterfall, the set of rules that govern how the cash flow that's generated by these underlying loans is distributed. This cash flow waterfall naturally informs the risk return profile of these different tranches. These senior tranches again should be because they have a, a high a prior claim here, a high ranking claim, they should have, be of higher quality and therefore of lower yield. Finally, I said this was fully funded and that means that securities are issued to investors such that cash is raised in an amount sufficient to fully cover defaults on the underlying reference asset. That's what it means to be fully funded. It's no longer the prevalent structure. But still, the key point here was that this is a synthetic, a synthetic CDO where the bank, instead of selling the assets, purchased credit protection to achieve the same goal of transferring credit risk to the investors. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for your time.